I'm being driven in a fully autonomous vehicle. Now it may look like it, but it is not a metro or a monorail. This is actually a vehicle with wheels on the road. And surprising as it may sound, it's been happening since 1999. These vehicles have been on certain roads in Netherlands and this is in fact the third generation of it. Now earlier this year, we were also driven in another autonomous vehicle. Not a pod like this, but an actual car, a Mercedes-Benz V-Class without a steering wheel. And that was courtesy of ZF. Now we are back near ZF's hometown to experience a lot more technology that is much closer than autonomous vehicles. And let's check out how much of that is actually ready to hit the road. ZF is expanding massively into intelligent automotive systems from cars that can speak to each other for autonomous driving capabilities to automotive components that can speak to each other for the era of connected technologies and the internet of things. ZF's intelligent chassis system is one such forward-looking technology. Remember the magic carpet ride that created headlines for Mercedes-Benz? Well, ZF has something similar. They're calling it the flying carpet ride. And as you would expect, it essentially promises to give you a ride that's absolutely flat, that's almost floaty as if you were Aladdin and flying on a magic carpet. What that essentially means is there's a lot more to it than just the suspension. There's every other component that is responsible for the vehicle dynamics. They're all working together to give you that kind of a flat ride. Let's check out how it works. One of the major components of the Flying Carpet 2.0 ride are the adaptive dampers in the suspension. It is called S-Motion in ZF speak. And unlike conventional dampers, which only add hydraulic resistance to an undulation, this system can work in a bi-directional manner to not only absorb the shock, but to also create an opposing force to counter the bouncing effects of the undulation. Using a compact electric motor and a bi-directional actuator, the S-Motion system can quickly raise or drop either of the four corners of the car to counter roll, pitch and tilt, which can occur not only because of imperfections in the road or even potholes, but also because of acceleration, deceleration, maneuvering and cornering. Notice how enabling the S-Motion system while driving on a rumbler strip quickly settles the chassis into a flat ride on this Volkswagen Touran. The system works equally well when it comes to corners, other undulations, deeper potholes, or even basic acceleration and deceleration forces. The system can also work in conjunction with GPS and forward-looking sensors to predict the road surface and prepare the chassis for any perfections or upcoming curves beforehand. A car dancing to music. We've seen that recently, haven't we, on the Mercedes-Benz GLE? Well, the difference is here it's doing it on a much lower cost vehicle. So the good news again is this kind of technology is also available from ZF on lower end vehicles, which again means that it is more economical, it is more easy to integrate even on lower spec cars. What that means for you and me? Well, that kind of flat ride, that kind of a comfortable ride that we have come to see and expect only on premium cars can soon be had on the regular cars that we drive every day. So ZF has also developed a rear axle steering. And we've already heard that, right? It's a big favorite in the sports car world. It's also now available on a lot of sports SUVs, big premium cars. So how is this different? Well, on those cars, it's a multi-link rear axle technology. On this, it's a twist beam type rear axle technology. What that essentially means is it's a lot more accessible, it's a lot more economical, and it also means that it could be integrated on cheaper cars. Now, cars don't have to be just premium or sports cars to have rear axle steering. They can incorporate it on lower end vehicles as well. This right here is a Civic Type R, but it can go even lower on everyday cars, premium hatchbacks, you name it, and they would be able to incorporate it. With autonomously driving cars, one may naturally spend a lot more time on their phone, book, laptop, or even big entertainment screens inside the cabin, which means that motion sickness could become a more frequent discomfort. Working in collaboration with the Saarland University in Germany, ZF is developing a series of countermeasures that can predict and detect motion sickness using sensors and cameras, and then help put the passengers at ease or even prevent motion sickness altogether. The researchers have managed to establish the correlation between vehicle dynamics and dizziness, headaches or nausea that it can cause to the occupants. This was made possible by collecting and analyzing neural and physiological data for over 10,000 kilometers. And going forward, 
These learnings will help in creating an artificial intelligence based algorithm that can gauge the behavioral pattern of the passengers and alter the dynamics of the vehicle accordingly to reduce the chances of motion sickness. Using sonic waves and also the air conditioning and the audio units in the car, the anti-motion sickness system can potentially manipulate the human senses like touch, smell and hearing to register the vehicle's motion and to reduce the discrepancy between these senses that usually causes this discomfort. ZF also showcased what could be the steering wheel of the near future before steering wheels go missing altogether. It uses motion and gesture controls on the wheel itself and that completely replaces the switches and the stocks that we have on a conventional steering wheel. Now, most electric vehicles until now have been more of an urban mobility solution, you know, driving around in the city, slower speeds, shorter distances. So a single speed transmission for these kind of vehicles was viable enough. That was also the reason why many of these EVs felt very on and off, you know, quite literally like a remote control vehicle. EVs of tomorrow, they need to be prepared for extra urban mobility, long range distances. So you're talking about long range on the battery as well. You're talking about four, five, six hundred kilometer range. And that is where a multi-speed transmission makes a case for itself. Because this kind of a transmission has the capability to harness the power of these electrical motors in a more efficient manner. Compared to the conventional one-step transmission, ZF's two-speed unit claims to improve range by 5%. That may not sound like much on a low-range EV, but on a long-range electric vehicle, the gain is large enough to give the car maker a choice between increasing range or reducing the battery size for a more compact and lighter construction. The bigger advantage is that the transmission allows a stronger low-end torque for city use and at the same time offer a better top end for highway use. It is a fully automatic transmission with no manual override and the shifts typically happen at around 70 km an hour. But this transmission along with other systems in the car can also predict the road ahead and the load conditions and then modify the behavior pattern of the transmission to adapt to these. This transmission can work with electric motors that are up to 140 kW in capacity but the modular nature of this concept means that these can be scaled up to work with performance electric cars as well who are seeking higher top speed as well as quicker acceleration. ZF also showcased a new generation of their acclaimed 8-speed automatic gearbox. With plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles taking center stage, the new gearbox is ready for these powertrains. It is compatible with an electric power output of up to 160 kW and is designed to work with new age 48-volt mild hybrid systems. Intelligently designed power electronics are integrated within the unit, eliminating the need of increased dimensions or any external casing. This also has bigger advantages in the packaging of hybrid systems and reduces the cable and component clutter in the process. The transmission has a modular construction, so it can be altered to be used with battery electric, plug-in hybrid, mild hybrid and internal combustion engines. In fact, all the enhancements of this new transmission have also been carried over to the 8-speed transmission that is mated to regular internal combustion engines which means they are more efficient and faster in their operation as well. ZF recently made headlines for having received massive orders from FCA and BMW and this transmission is the hero of it. When we are talking about the safety of an automobile in an impact collision, if you look at the front section of the car, there is enough material, enough length in here that will crumple and reduce the impact that reaches a passenger cell in case of a frontal collision. But what happens when there's a T-bone, when there's a side collision? You don't have enough materials, you don't have enough crumple zones. So you have everything from strengthened side membranes to side airbags, curtain airbags, trying to reduce the injury and the impact that reaches the passenger cell. But one third of such accidents usually lead to fatalities. Now you have new age cars like the Audi A8, which can also raise themselves on their electronic suspension in order to reduce that impact if it detects an impending collision. But is that going to be enough? Maybe not, but ZF could be on to something here. Now what makes this system interesting and also technically challenging is the fact that usual airbags are deployed upon impact. Whereas this airbag has to deploy on prediction. It has to predict an impending collision and then deploy itself in good time to avoid any injury to the occupants. ZF claims that it can deploy in 150 milliseconds and that is quick. 
to do that, it needs a plethora of sensors that can act fast. You need supercomputers that can analyze the situation quickly and deploy the airbag. Now, we have seen similar supercomputers from ZF earlier this year at the CES, and those are the kind of systems that this car utilizes for deploying safety systems like these. It isn't just a concept, but a technology that is ready for production as demonstrated by the balloon car colliding into the real one. The only drawback to it is the blasting sound of the airbag deploying, but we believe that it is far lesser than the death knell created by the collision of two vehicles.